Hello YouTube! So, you're traveling in France but you don't know what to see. I've got you covered. Here are 10 incredible things that you can see all around France. Now these are mostly landmarks. This isn't like recommending cities or beautiful villages. I've done that before. Check the rest of my YouTube channel. This is 10 specific landmarks that you should visit while you're in France. Uh, and a little look around them through some of the footage that I've taken on this trip over the past two months scootering around the whole country. So. Without further ado, 10 things you should see in France that will blow your mind. Number one, Mont Saint-Michel. So this is about four hours from Paris, maybe half a day if you're taking public transport, but it really is worth it. It's also the most touristy thing on the list, so I won't give it too much time, but you have to see it. It's a UNESCO heritage site. It's a tiny village with this, I think 50 people live in this village, and it's got this beautiful abbey up on the top. Uh, swarming with tourists, about 3 million every year, so you won't see it alone. Go there early in the morning, go there late in the evening, and just enjoy uh, walking through a fairy tale. Number two, Ile de Ré. So this is a little island off the west coast of France near La Rochelle. Really beautiful. What you need to do is you need to go down there for a weekend. You need to hire a bike. It's about five hours drive from Paris or three hours on the train. Hire a bike, cycle through the salt fields. Absolutely beautiful. I did it on a tandem bike, which I can recommend if you got someone to travel with. And then wander through all the charming little towns. Get a cocktail, bit of people watching, sit there. We went to Saint Martin de Rey, which is really beautiful. And uh, you can't really go wrong on Ile de Rey. It's probably France's favorite island, with apologies to Corsica and Mont Saint Michel that I just mentioned before. Number three, gladiators, are you ready? We're heading down to the Roman arenas in the south of France, in the Provence area. There are three really good ones to check out, especially in Nîmes and Arles, which are kind of like the Colosseum arena in Rome. But you want to see those two, and you want to see the amphitheater in Orange, or Orange, as it looks like it's spelt, as it looks like it's pronounced. Uh, but this, these are brilliant examples of this kind of ancient Roman architecture, and it's mind-boggling to think that you're walking in a building that's over 2,000 years old. Go and check it out. There's a, there's a bunch of them down there and they're all quite close together. So that's seven hours drive from Paris or maybe three and a half hours if you take the train. And in Provence, you can't really go wrong. It's really beautiful down there. Number four, this isn't a typical recommendation and I wonder if you've ever heard of it. There's a village called Vézelay, which is about three hours drive southeast of Paris. Really beautiful village on a hilltop with an 11th century uh, abbey or a cathedral. And uh, the pro tip here, besides the village and seeing the view from this amazing uh, place in the in sort of in the middle of nowhere of France, is you've got to go inside the abbey, go down in the crypt, and look at what legend says is a bone from the body of Mary Magdalene. It's also the start of one of the popular pilgrim routes that goes all the way down to the Spain uh, across the Pyrenees Mountains. So a lot of people start in Vézelay because of this religious connotation. Well worth a look, really interesting village. Point five, go to the cathedral that looks over Marseille. It is the best view from a cathedral in the whole country, in my opinion, and that's because you've got the Alps to one side, you've got the Mediterranean Sea to the other, and you've got the bustling city below spread out in front of you. Just an incredible view. The cathedral itself is magnificent. I mean, the inside of it's incredible, the view's incredible, and if you're a history nerd, you can see a bit of World War II damage uh, on the sign, which has been really well preserved. So. Go and check that one out. Of course, Marseille is well worth a visit too, but be sure to check out that cathedral. And it's seven and a half hours drive from Paris, three and a half hours if you take the train, which would be the smart move. Also, it's about six weeks by scooter if you're as adventurous as me and my wife were, although I do recommend the train. Number six is the pink granite beaches of Plumenac in Brittany. So on the north coast of Brittany, there's a whole coastline with these big, beautiful, kind of stunningly formed rocks and depending on what time of the day and how bright the sunshine is they seem to change color so they're typically said to be the pink granite rocks check them out number seven is the boardwalk at Deauville now this is a really touristy place and uh, while the boardwalk might not seem like one of the best things to see in the whole country it's quite interesting to understand the connection to Paris and the French people not to mention the aristocracy from French and English history this is a holiday destination for many, many years. Go and walk in the footsteps of these aristocrats and in the footsteps of people like Coco Chanel, not to mention the beautiful, colorful beach with all the umbrellas off to your side as you go. So Deauville is a really popular weekend destination for the Parisians as well. You'll have better people watching than most parts of France. Uh, 
mainly because the Parisians are all over the place up there. So this one is about two and a half hours drive from Paris or two and a half hours on the train. Okay, eight, almost rounding out the list, it's the Chateau of Chantilly, which is a 16th century chateau. You might recognize it, it's been in loads of films before, James Bond films, films with Audrey Hepburn, this is popular. Get in there, check out the chateau, check out the artwork in the gallery, which is said to rival the Louvre, because it's got such a great classical co collection. I mean, we're talking Delacroix, Botticelli, Raphael, everything's in there. Uh, but while you're in the chateau area, go to one side, check out the stables and all the horses but also go to the other side and have some sorbet, expensive sorbet, but with Chantilly cream made on site. Chantilly cream in Chantilly can't really go wrong. Number nine, the Bayeux Tapestry. So this was made in the 1070s. It's 70 meters long, this enormous tapestry that tells about the story of uh, the Norman conquest of England and the Battle of Hastings. It's an incredible piece of art. You can, it, it takes a good, you know, you listen to the audio guide, you walk all the way around. It'll blow your mind, I'm sure, even if you didn't think tapestry was your thing. Uh, and it's about three hours out of Paris heading northwest. Number 10, I saved my favorite for last. It's Carcassonne, the medieval city, the old Cité de Carcassonne. Head down here. It's really far from Paris though. It's about seven hours drive, six hours on the train. But if you go down there, you will be rewarded. It's a history lover's dream. And even if you're not a history lover, you will end up loving the old stories of France because Carcassonne has it all. It's this city, I've talked about it on many podcasts, blogs, and even YouTube videos before. It's a city that was torn down, rebuilt so many times that they didn't even really know what it would look like until they brought in one guy to sort of redesign it and save it from ruin. Make sure, if I can give you one tip when you're there, is get up on the rampart, walk around the edge of it, and you'll see, uh, you get a feeling for an old French city that uh, is pretty much unparalleled around the whole country. Some people say that Paris in the olden days, maybe 800 years ago, uh, would have resembled Carcassonne as you see it today. So that's my tip. Go there, check it out. If you want to hear all these uh, tips in more detail, listen to the podcast episode that I released just before where me and my wife, Lena, talked in great detail about some of these places, all of which we visited on the honeymoon season of the Eiffel Tower. That's all from me. Hope you subscribe if you like this video and I'll see you next time.